Recently, Uncle Punch and a handful of community members created a way to add specific custom stages to Melee that are playable with rollback netcode, and all you need to get them set up is a single gecko code in Dolphin. Perhaps unsurprisingly, this objectively impressive feature has led to some interesting discussion around the idea of adding new custom stages to the competitive scene. In this video, I'll attempt to break down some of the most common arguments for and against the use of custom stages in an effort to hopefully convince you that custom stages are something our community should, at the very least, consider using. This is the case for custom stages. Part 1 Twitter.com. The first and most important thing I want to address is that these stages have not been added to Melee's tournament rule set. There are no current plans to add them to Melee's tournament rule set. And even if we did add custom stages, that doesn't necessarily mean we'd use any of the stages that were recently added. While it's true that there will be an exhibition tournament using only these stages happening soon, that's not the same thing as changing our competitive rule set. So seeing people tweet as if that's what's happening is a little silly. Imagine if the first thing you saw on Twitter after watching Rishi's Jungle Jam was community figures tweeting slippery slope fallacies and tweets outlining how this new mode is the quickest way to kill our game. I know I'm being a little dramatic here, and I get that the players who share opinions like this likely believe that adding custom stages altogether is a bad idea, but I don't think I'm alone in saying that if you're using Great Bay, a custom stage that literally describes itself as not competitively viable in its description to prove that custom stages are a bad idea, that probably isn't the slam dunk argument that you think it is. I think if we actually want to debate the topic of custom stages, we need to start by understanding how stages affect melee in the first place. Part two, how much do stages matter really? Let's start with the way stages affect the game. As I've argued in a previous video, stages have a measurable effect on the overall balance of the game, but that doesn't mean changing a stage is as impactful as changing a character's individual moves or frame data. Fox won't magically become a worse character if we added custom stages, but changing a single stage can still have a big impact on a given matchup. For example, if we were to ban FD, Fox would very likely have a better matchup versus Marth, and conversely, if we added another stage like FD, that would likely make the matchup worse for Fox. Despite all of this, Fox being one of the best characters in the game is not dependent on whether or not FD exists. Fox's strengths and the strengths of other top tiers exist independently from stages. However, stages affect the game, and like many of you, I'm really cautious about making changes to Melee as it's managed to survive and thrive for almost 20 years despite few changes to its design. For this reason, I do think it's understandable to adopt a if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality when it comes to melee. But the problem with this line of thinking is that many players extend the melee purity position a bit too far. They claim that melee is where it is because we haven't changed anything, and this simply isn't true. Stage lists, among other things, have changed significantly over the years, and if we didn't make these changes, our game would be less viable as an esport. It's hard not to look at these arguments and wonder, would they be saying the same thing if we were talking about a change that we already made? Especially one that was clearly beneficial? Remember all the people that argued UCF was a bad idea? I'm willing to bet that a large chunk of them are probably fine with it now. I think the problem I have with a lot of Melee purists is that it feels like you can boil their arguments down to, all the changes we did so far were fine, but any additional changes are definitely bad. And that's just not very convincing. If you were to say that every time we make a change to the game, and then you revise your position to be, okay, yeah, that was good, but definitely not this next thing, I'm gonna have to take all of your positions with a grain of salt. So rather than adopting a, you just can't change Melee mindset, I think we as a community should be a lot more comfortable experimenting with changing stages because it is something we've already successfully implemented throughout our game's history. I'm not saying that means we should do it, but you have to acknowledge that we have literally changed the stage list before, and it helped the game. If that's the case, you can't really argue that changing the stage list is always an objectively bad idea. But wait, you might say that this is different. We're talking about adding stages, not removing them. And removing Rainbow Crews or Pokeflows just isn't the same thing as adding custom stages. Well, to those people, I'd argue that it's important to remember our existing stage list isn't perfect either. If we were to present Yoshi's Story or Dreamland as custom stages that no one had ever seen, I'm pretty sure a lot of our community would say stuff like, look, it's a cool stage, but those shy guys make it not viable. Or, I like the design, but Wispy has to go. And don't even get me started on what they would say about Pokemon Stadium transformations. So even if adding stages is fundamentally different from removing stages, which I agree with, this argument does rely on the idea that the stages we are currently using are far better than any stage we could create on our own. 
and I just don't believe that's true. I'm not trying to start a debate about whether we should remove specific stage hazards in the game. I'm just trying to prove that melee shouldn't be changed isn't the bulletproof argument that you think it is, and I can prove it. If you believe adding stages is always a bad idea simply because it changes melee, I'd ask you this question. If Battlefield didn't already exist in melee and our community created a stage identical to it, should we add Battlefield to the game? You and I both know that Battlefield isn't perfect. The ledges are annoying, and even though it's probably the most neutral stage we have, there's probably still some characters that benefit more from Battlefield existing than others. But if we're being honest, can you really say that adding Battlefield would make the game worse or fundamentally ruin what makes Melee great and mean it? I think most players would generally agree, knowing what we know now, that Melee is a better game with Battlefield in it. But wait, knowing what we know now, that's the key phrase, isn't it? Sure, adding Battlefield is good, but because we know it's good, adding other stages is just too risky. Once again, this is another argument I hear a lot, and I find it a bit hard to believe given where in the Melee timeline this discussion is taking place. Is it really that hard to imagine after nearly two decades of competition, our community couldn't collectively design and tweak a new stage or two to add to the list of tournament legal stages? I think the reality is that we're more qualified than we have ever been to make a stage that's amazing, and our experience with previous stages both within Melee and with other Smash games gives us the experience necessary to design something genuinely awesome. That doesn't mean that it wouldn't take time. But as long as the stage designers listen to the community, especially the very best players, and are willing to tweak a stage until we get it right, I think we'll be okay. Worst case scenario, we mess up, change or remove the stage from our list, and move on. It's okay to experiment, guys. Remember, I completely understand why people feel scared about changing melee, especially if your livelihood depends on it. But remember that Battlefield example. If we had added Battlefield, we'd probably have some players saying stuff like, man, I only lost because of this custom stage's bad ledges, even though we all would know that the real reason they lost is because Martha's the best character. Part 3. Balance bad, variety good. Even if you believe that adding stages could be a good thing for Melee, I think if your motivation for adding the stages is purely to balance the game, we disagree. Melee's metagame is doing fine. We have a diverse group of top players with really interesting storylines and narratives popping up every day. Sure, if we lived in the 20XX universe where Fox is the only viable character, it would probably be a good idea to fix that, but we don't, so it's okay. As I've said before, changing the stage list in a way to deliberately tweak the balance of the game may make sense one day but today is not that day. I think that this position can and should inform our design philosophy as well. If we attempt to design a stage that is as neutral as possible from the start to avoid having a major impact on balance, this seems like a safe way to test out custom stages as a whole. Once we've figured out as a community how to do that, we can try designing counterpick style stages, but either way, the goal is to affect balance as little as we can. I recognize that you could argue that this is an unrealistic way to view the process of adding new stages, and that creating an imbalanced stage is inevitable, and I guess I'd say, okay, We've banned and unbanned things before, we've added a lot of small but impactful tweaks to the game, and we are still standing and we are still thriving. We've already seen a lot of really positive additions to the game in the last 10 years, and isn't it possible that custom stages might just be one more example of that? I'm fine with acknowledging that it's very possible we mess up on the first try, but I just refuse to believe that we couldn't make a great stage after significant testing. Part 4. Nintendo. In spite of all of this, there are arguably still some pretty big drawbacks to adding stages besides potentially hurting the meta. Probably the most notable involves our friends at Nintendo. While it's been inspiring to see the free melee movement bring back stuff like PM to the scene, and I'm all for adopting an F Nintendo attitude, I think we do need to acknowledge that playing it pretty safe has, in some ways, helped us as a scene. Part of the reason that Nintendo's decision to shut down Big House Online felt so unjustified is that netplay tournaments aren't really different from regular tournaments, and the major modification to the game that Nintendo was complaining about is just the ability to play with other people online. So if we added custom stages, we do lose the ability to say, hey, all we're doing is playing the game online with no changes. Now we are actually modding the game, and those mods are visible on screen whenever a player selects a new stage. However, it is worth noting that we did already kind of do this by freezing Pokemon Stadium, even if that was necessary with the technology. On top of all this, there is an argument that a lot of negative attention we get is from people who seem to think we've already heavily modded the game, so you could argue that we might as well make the changes because they already paint us as filthy modders anyway. Ultimately, I don't really have a good counter-argument to this other than the fact that a lot of really good things in our scene are also not allowed in the eyes of Nintendo then we should try it if we genuinely feel it will make the game better. I completely respect anyone who doesn't want to give Nintendo more ammunition in the Slippy Wars, but I also feel like now might be the best time to push back on that. Maybe that's just me. Another argument against custom stages has to do with the barriers to play within the scene. Some would argue that adding custom stages could make it harder for people wanting to get into Melee. 
Their argument goes like this. If you want to get into Melee nowadays, owning a vanilla copy of the game in a GameCube isn't enough. You need to download Slippy, buy a controller and an adapter, download multiple custom practice ISOs, and more. To them, adding one more barrier only adds to these accessibility issues, so custom stages wouldn't be worth it. This argument sounds good on the surface, because it's piggybacking on a legitimate problem within our scene. It is fundamentally true that Melee has major barriers to entry right now, but custom stages won't actually add to these barriers in any meaningful way. Right now, the primary way to play Melee is to download Slippy online. This requires a PC, a controller adapter, and an ISO that you ripped from your Melee disc. While it is true that these custom stages require additional effort to install right now, since they rely entirely on a Gecko code, all you would need to do to remove that barrier is just turn on the Gecko code by default within Slippy. Slippy already has multiple Gecko codes running straight out of the box, so adding another one won't require any additional setup steps from the new players if you implement it correctly. Okay, but maybe you're not talking about how it affects Slippy, you're talking about how it affects people who own GameCubes and vanilla copies of the game. I find this argument even less compelling, given how few people actually play on a vanilla copy of the game in the first place. I think if COVID-19 didn't exist, the majority of people playing Melee would still be playing on Slippy, and a lot of the people who are just getting into the game would also get into it through Slippy. On top of all this, a vanilla copy of Melee would still only be missing a handful of stages, which really isn't the end of the world to me. So not only am I not convinced that most people get into the game through a disc and a GameCube, I'm also not convinced that custom stages would be enough to make those people feel like custom stages are holding them back from playing the game properly. After all, vanilla Melee doesn't have online play, which is probably the single most important feature to a new player. So yes, there are legitimate barriers to entry with regards to Melee, but adding custom stages just isn't one of them. Hopefully this video gave you some stuff to think about. While I don't expect to win people over overnight, I do think there are some legitimately good reasons for and against the use of custom stages, and I think we can safely experiment with them without hurting the scene. After all, we unbanned wobbling ones and managed to realize the error of our ways before it was too late. That's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get notified when I make my next video. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Did I miss an argument? Am I actually an idiot? Let me know. If you wanna see more videos like this one, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon, where you'll get videos a day early and have access to behind the scenes content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.